Okay, welcome to the homotopy type theory electronic seminar talks. We're continuing our series of talks by junior researchers in the field. Um, we'll have two 30 minute talks today. Uh, they'll be in separate recordings. The first talk uh, is by Jarl Flatten from Western University, uh, who will be talking about central H spaces and banded types. Please go ahead, Jarl. All right, thanks, Dan. So this is uh, joint work with a bunch of smart people, Ulrich, Dan, who just spoke, and David Jazz and Egbert. All right, so there we go. I'll try to be softer on the, the buttons. So our goals today are twofold. Our first goal is to prove this um, equivalence here, uh, which relates uh, age space, uh, the type of age space structures on a pointed type A to pointed maps from A smash A to A. And our proof of this formula goes via uh, evaluation vibrations, which I'll, I'll introduce shortly. And this formula generalizes a classical formula in spaces, which was independently discovered by several authors. And then we'll also see that uh, there are no age-based structures on even spheres in positive dimensions, as is well known classically, but now we can show it in, in hot using also this theory of evaluation vibrations. So that's our first goal. And then we'll discuss uh, centrality of a type and centrality uh, of an age space. And we'll see that we can, there's an associated notion of banded types for a central type, and we can tensor them. Uh, and we're led to these considerations through the, the stuff that goes into the first goal. So they're, they're not unrelated. Um, and this, this tensoring of banded types will let us give a new construction of eilenberg maclean spaces along with their age space structure. And as we saw in Axel's talk a while back, um, having different descriptions of a type along with an operation like a multiplication uh, with different judgmental properties can be useful for different computations. And so we're interested in this particular construction of eilenberg maclean spaces for certain applications to computing Euler classes of oriented sphere bundles in another ongoing project. Uh, I, so, but that's in parentheses, so I won't be discussing that in any detail today. That's the motivation. Okay, and I should mention that most of these results have been formalized using the, the Cockhot library. All right, so let me start by reminding you uh, what an H space is. So if A is a pointed type, we'll let it be a pointed type throughout. And we'll denote the base point uh, just by PT. Then a coherent age space structure on A consists of the following data. We have a binary operation mu from A to A to A, or A cross A to A. Then I have left and right uh, like homotopies, two homotopies exhibiting the base point as a left and right identity for the multiplication, for this binary operation. And lastly, I have a coherence two cell which uh, relates the, when you take the, the homotopy for the left identity and you put in the point, you get a path from point times point to point. And you do the same thing for the right uh, identity. Now you get two, a priori, two distinct paths from point times point to point. And the coherence two cell says that these two paths agree. And uh, by defining this type, we get a type H space A of coherent H space structures on A. Now, in this talk, H space is, is always going to mean the coherent notion, but I should point out that uh, in the hot book, they work with without coherence, so non coherent H spaces, if you will. And uh, you can do a lot of nice things without this coherence, like the hop vibration, but uh, for our purposes, the coherent setting is, is most natural. So if you haven't if you're not familiar with uh, H spaces already, let me supply you with some examples. For example, any group, like just set level group G, that's an H space. Um, any infinity group, uh, omega X, if you will, so loops X. Uh, and so in particular, among the spheres, we have uh, S naught, the two points. Uh, we have S1, the one sphere. We also know in homotopy type theory that the three sphere is an H space. This is due to uh, Egbert and Ulrich. And classically, 
the remaining sphere that has an H-based structure is S7. But to my knowledge, this has not been worked out in homotopy type theory yet. OK, so those are some examples of H-based spaces. Now let's talk about evaluation vibrations. And let alpha be a pointed map from a pointed type B to our pointed type A. Then the evaluation vibration associated to alpha is the following map. It takes uh, a map from B to A in the path component of alpha as an unpointed uh, map, and it evaluates at the point. Uh, so this, this type here, this is uh, the path component. So it's the sigma type of all F from B to A, which are merely equal as unpointed maps uh, to alpha. Okay, so that's the path component. So then this is the evaluation vibration. It's just the restriction of the, the map that evaluates at the point to this path component. Now let A be connected. Uh, then we have the following observation. Uh, the type of H-based structures on A is equivalent to the type of pointed sections of the evaluation vibration at the identity. So let me, just for convenience sake, let me write out what this guy is, and I'm going to denote it as follows. I can take, uh, this is the domain, the path component of the identity, and it evaluates at the point. And I mean, uh, by like definitionally, I take maps from A to A in the path component of the identity, but these are all automatically equivalences since you're, they're merely equal to the identity. So this, this is what this guy looks like, it's ev id. And this lemma is completely formal. In fact, in, in, in Coq, we have a tactic uh, which almost can prove this with a little, little bit of help. So it's just about contracting uh, sigmas and, and juggling data around. So I won't give a proof. But here's a useful proposition um, that this uh, lemma lets us, um, that pairs nicely with the lemma. So any H-based structure on A induces a trivialization of the evaluation vibration of the identity. So I'm going to sketch a proof here, and I'm going to start by discussing uh, these evaluation vibrations, but before uh, restricting to path components. So here, I simply have the map which evaluates at the point of A. And uh, this map is going to be, as a vibration over A, it's going to be trivial. So I'm going to, it's going to be um, equivalent to the product of the base and the fiber over A. Now the base is the type of pointed maps from A to A. Now that's the fiber, sorry. And the, the base is A, of course. Uh, and here I have the second projection. OK, and then I'm saying, uh, well, there's a trivialization here, call it tau mu. And um, it sends some f, let me write it over here, to, uh, well, if I have a, an unpointed function f, I'm going to correct it so to make it pointed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it by f applied to the point on the left, uh, on the right, sorry. Um, and so this is the, if you have a, an H space that's connected, the, the left and right multiplication maps uh, are invertible. And so this is the, the right inverse uh, division on the right. And the second component, I'm just going to record the data of uh, F at the point. So this is the map. And um, so this, sorry. Um, so this is an equivalence, and we can restrict to path components, giving the uh, desired uh, trivialization. So now restrict to path components. All right. So this uh, proposition is going to pay off uh, on the next slide. So here I'm just reminding you of the proposition we just sketch the proof of. Now let A be an H space, still connected, so connected H space. Then uh, the type of H space structures on A is equivalent to the type of pointed maps from A smash A to A. Let me, let me remind you what uh, the smash product is. Well, you take A times A, and inside A times A, you have A wedge A living as 
a comma point and point comma a. And now we take the cofiber of this map and that's the smash product. So the push out here. Okay, so I, I skipped a proof on the previous slide because it was formal. Now this proof is gonna be quite formal too, but I hope maybe you'll like it. So uh, we're gonna do just a, a sequence of equivalences. So the H space structures on A, we had this lemma that they correspond to pointed sections of the evaluation vibration, pointed sections of the evaluation vibration at the, of the identity. Okay. But when A is already in H space, we have this proposition that says that uh, the evaluation vibration at the identity uh, is trivial. So pointed sections of a trivial vibration correspond to just pointed maps into the fiber. So then I get pointed maps into uh, like this, pointed maps from A to A, pointed at the identity. And there's, a, there's really a path component um, entering here, but I can drop it away since A is connected. So this, uh, it always lands in the point, path component of whatever the point goes to. And now I can, uh, the fact that A is an H space lets me uh, change the base point of this mapping type. So I can change from the identity to the constant map, which is a more usual pointing of the uh, mapping spaces. So the constant map, I'm just gonna write it CST. And now we have the uh, smash HOM adjunction for pointed types, which gets us to the smash product. Okay, so fairly formal, but uh, there was this correction of the pointing that we had to do as well. Okay, and as an application of this formula, we see that the type of H space structures on the one sphere is the twofold loop space, which is contractible, of course. So there's a single one, a unique one. And uh, the type of H space structures on S3 is the sixfold loop space of S3. And let me just mention that pi six of S3 is, is well known classically, it's Z mod 12. And so we expect that there are 12 components of this uh, type here. So up to homotopy, 12 different, different H space structures on S3. Okay, so now let's uh, see uh, that even spheres don't admit H base structures. And it's this lemma on the top that's gonna play a role again. Now let N and M be greater than one. You can also consider the case where they're just greater than uh, zero, uh, but uh, that's gonna, let's, let's do this now. Um, alpha, let it be a pointed map from SM to SN. Then uh, if the evaluation vibration of alpha merely admits a section, then the whitehead product vanishes. And I'll remind you of what the whitehead product is as part of the proof. Okay, so uh, first we're gonna suppose we're gonna take such uh, a mere section, but since I'm proving a proposition, I can actually pick a section. So let S be a section uh, from Sn to Sm to Sn. Path component of alpha is a section. Okay, then I'm gonna draw a diagram and do some steps at once. I'm gonna, I can drop the path component of alpha and then I can uncurry or transpose across the adjunction. And then I can flip the, uh, the input variables of S and I get a map like this, SM cross SN, I'm gonna call it S prime. This is the resulting map from the construction I just did describe to you into Sn. And on the left here, I'm gonna draw some stuff that relates to the um, whitehead product. So here we're gonna have the wedge, uh, sorry, the wedge like this. And into the product, we're gonna have a cell here, plus n minus one. There we're gonna have a, there's a push out square like this. 
And uh, if I now at the top here put alpha wedge, uh, the identity of Yoda n, so the identity of the n sphere, um, then this composite here on the top, this is, uh, let me get that right. This composite at the top, this is what defines the underlying, that's the underlying map of this uh, whitehead product. So it suffices to show that this top composite is merely constant. Now, um, at the bottom here, of course, I have just the, the map from one to Sn. And using the fact that S, S is a section of this evaluation vibration, it's not too hard to show that these two uh, triangles here merely commute. And so you can transpose across this diagram and it implies that the white hat product is, is trivial as desired. Okay. So uh, it follows that there are no H-based structures on the even spheres in positive dimension. And uh, this uses that Brunery in his thesis computed that in this case, the situation here, these, uh, I should write two N here. Um, so let me highlight this completely. This is two, so it's not trivial. Since it's not trivial, there can't be any sections of the evaluation vibration of Yoda N, but the evaluation vibration of Yoda N is, is FID. Uh, so there can't be any H-based structures on these even spheres. Okay, so using Brunery's computation, we were able to rule out these H-based structures by thinking about evaluation vibrations. All right, so in the remaining time, uh, we're gonna discuss central types and banded types. And still, it's this, this lemma that I, I'm reminding you of the top um, that's going to play a role. So pointed type A is central if the evaluation vibration of the identity is an equivalence. Now, a lot of nice things follow from this condition. For example, that A is connected because the domain of this vibration is connected. Follows that H, uh, the type of H-based structures on A is contractible because uh, there's a unique pointed section of this equivalence, and it's given by the inverse, which is unique. And so in particular, by taking the center of contraction here, A becomes an H space. And this H space structure is coherently abelian, uh, which is a term I'm not gonna define right now. Uh, but in fact, on the next slide, we're gonna see that A is in fact a loop space. So it has a canonical delooping. Now, a central H space is an H space whose underlying type is central. And we can give conditions for when uh, a connected H space is central, meaning that the H space structure is the one coming from uh, centrality. So it's unique uh, as the one coming from centrality. Here's one such condition that we can give. If X is a connected H space, then X is central if and only if uh, the type of pointed maps from X to loops X is contractible. Okay, so that immediately yields us some examples. For example, uh, if we take eilenberg mclean spaces uh, for G abelian. Are all central um, and some products of eilenberg mclean spaces are central as well, so let me give another one. That if you take RP infinity cross CP infinity. that's central uh, and let me give you a non example. So, for example, S3 is, is not central, uh, but here's another product of Eilenberg McLean spaces, which is not central. Uh, you can take S1 cross uh, CP infinity. That's not central. And you can see that it's going to violate uh, this condition that I just gave. Okay. So, uh, we don't know at the moment whether there are central types which are not products of Eilenberg McLean spaces. And that would be interesting uh, to see but we don't have any such examples yet. But there are, uh, we see that some products are and others aren't. So it's quite uh, interesting. Okay, so if A is central, then we can consider banded types over A. So uh, we're gonna define B out one of A to be, it's a type of A bands for short. And an A band is a type X equipped with a zero truncated identification with A. Okay, so if you will, this is uh, the uh, one connected cover of the universe pointed at, uh, at A. That's another way of, of seeing it. So now loops of B out A, B out one of A, um, we can see that it is the following. B 
by uh, the characterizations uh, of paths and sigma types, it's not too hard to see that it's, uh, um, sorry, A to A, uh, such that P is merely equal to the identity, sorry, to REFL. Um, and this is equivalent to the self-equivalences of A, the path component of the identity, which we know is equivalent to A by the centrality hypothesis. So uh, we see that B ought one of A is a the looping of A. Okay. Now we have an inversion operation on um, A, the central type. And well, you can define this whenever you have right inverses, but um, um, let's do it for a central type A. And you could have defined it to be the left uh, fraction as well, but they, they coincide in this case. So this is the inversion operation. You take the point and you multiply by A inverse on the right. Now for an A band XP, where P is the band. So I should have said this zero truncated identification, we call the band. And so uh, P is the band in this case, we can dualize it. And you, the, the underlying type is the same, but you update the uh, identification to A uh, by composing with uh, the inverse self-equivalence of A. That's, uh, that's a self-equivalence of A. Okay, so that defines the, the dualization procedure. Now, um, there's a tensor operation where you take, you dualize the left argument and you take uh, paths in B01. And this gives you a type, of course, the identity type. But the proposition is that uh, this is banded by A. So it's, in fact, an element of B01 of A. It's going to define a tensor operation uh, on uh, B01. OK, so uh, what we need to show is that uh, we have a zero truncated identification, xp dual is equal to B01. By Q to A, right? Um, and uh, now this is, uh, we're proving something in a set. So we can uh, take away the truncations on P and Q and we can induct uh, on P and Q. So we can induct on P and Q. Uh, then the goal becomes. Uh, the following. So A uh, is now, uh, so A dual. Um, sorry, I should have, I left out a thing that I should have said here. So there's another uh, description of this, which is perhaps a bit more concrete. Let me say it. It's the type of identifications from Y, uh, from X to Y, uh, but just of underlying types. And uh, you Take the path component where you take, you go from X to A to A to Y, and you take P from X to A, then you take the inverse from A to A, and then you take Q inverse. So that's another description of this uh, tensor here. And um, now when we induct on P and Q, what we end up with, it's not too hard to see, on the left hand side, we end up with. Uh, identifications from A to A at the path component of the inverse operation. And we need to sh construct an equivalence or a path down to A. Now we can do this by going via uh, this guy here at the identity, because we know we already have an equivalence here. And here we can view paths from A to A as equivalences, and we pre-compose with the inversion self-equivalence. So this composite here, uh, after inducting, gives the, the thing of the desired type. OK. So um, our goal now is to see that uh, this tensor operation makes uh, Biot1 into an H space. And uh, I was going to show this. Well, here's the proposition for the left and right identities. I don't think I have time to give the proof, because I want to discuss the next slide as well. Um, but you show these left and right identities essentially by doing the same. Uh, you can 
strip truncations and induct on this path P, and then you get a, a diagram that you can show that commutes uh, in the end. So um, in addition, you can show that these, uh, you get coherence. So when you put in uh, A uh, in uh, both spots and uh, these two paths, they agree. So you can construct a two cell making this H-based structure coherent. And that's what this theorem is saying that B out one, is a, a coherent H-based structure under tensoring, but in fact, it's, it's abelian in a certain sense. So you, you can actually um, commute um, things you tensor. Okay, so now it's easy. Uh, we're gonna use this theorem. Uh, and we saw that it's easy to show that KGN is central when G is abelian and you're given an H-based structure on KGN, but we can also use this theorem to construct a KGN uh, along with an H-based structure. Um, starting from an H base KG1. So let's uh, briefly see that in the remaining time. So given a KG1 with an H base structure, then we induct inductively do the following. So first, uh, note that KGN, we're starting at N equals one, uh, it's central that you can see just by the proposition we had a few slides back. Okay, so if I define KGN plus one to be B odd one of KGN, it's an H space and it's clearly connected. Uh, and so by the same proposition, it's in fact central. And it's since uh, this type of pointed maps from KGN plus one into KGN, which is the loop space, uh, is contractible. Okay, so that concludes this uh, construction of uh, KG uh, for uh, KGN for for arbitrary n along with its H-based structure. And as I said, this, uh, this construction relates directly to how we've defined Euler classes of oriented sphere bundles in another project. All right, so that's all I wanted to speak about today. Thanks for your attention and I welcome, welcome any questions. Okay, let's all thank Yaro with our usual silent visual applause. And are there any questions? Has Axel unmuted? I can't hear anything. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Now I can hear you. Yeah, I, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, uh, about uh, uh, Pi 6 S3, I might have missed something, yeah. but did you compute it? or? No, no, no I haven't computed it. Uh, I'm saying classically, it's, it's, uh, it's known to be Z mod 12. It would be great if we compute it in hot because then we would know how many H based structures up to home we there are on the three sphere. Promising results. I mean, what, what do you think is easier, like uh, analyzing the right hand side or the left hand side of this equivalence? Um, uh, I think it's easier to analyze, uh, I mean, to compute pi six of S3 by other means. I think, I think it would be really cool if you could compute it just by H based theory. Um, it gives like a venue of attack, but it seems very complicated and difficult to go through this uh, this way. But it would be a novel uh, way of doing it. Okay, any other questions? All right, let's thank you all again. <laughs>